you know, earlier I made a video discussing some of the issues that were happening with this particular hotel thing. Now, any anybody who knows me, I don't report the news. I don't report news stories. And I always look a little different at certain issues than a lot of people. The name of the video I was talking about is the real reason why China mistreats some Africans. Now, when I made this video, there were a lot of butthurt Negroes in the comment sections. Some people were talking about, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. You, you don't have any idea geopolitically, but you're still my guy. You know, some of you niggas were coming in here throwing little half insults and stuff like that. And I'm going to tell you like that. I don't deal in that. I, I really don't deal in no damn half insults. And I, I was trying to be cool and be logical and not be a nigga. But I see I'm going to have to cuss you niggas out. I see this what y'all want. So uh, let me break this down to y'all because some of y'all are dumb in these comment sections. I, I'm, You know. Just because I don't always seem like an intellectual, I will cook any of y'all in any kind of geopolitical debate or anything, any day of the week. That goes for anybody regarding this topic. And I'm going to explain to you in this video why China is doing what it's doing. See, a lot of y'all, a lot of you, 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 you African Americans, or some of you blacks, well, 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 China, they're not there to help. They're there to exploit. Uh, no, number one, nigga. <laughs> this is called business. See, this is wrong with black Americans or black people in general. You guys expect that people should come and do shit for you for free. This this is this is this is y'all. You want to talk about exploitation? The countries in Africa exploit each other more so than any outside person. But you niggas don't want to talk about that. And, and, and since we want to talk about something like foreign aid, let, let's talk about foreign aid. Because some of y'all don't know what, what, what foreign aid and how it really hurts Africa. Africa have been getting billions of dollars of foreign aid for a long time. Let me talk about how cold and fucked up foreign aid is from the West. What the West will do, let's talk about the Biafra War that happened in Nigeria from 67 to 1970. I'm giving you an example of how cold and dishonest the West is. The South of Nigeria wanted its independence. The more educated South, because typically when, when, when the white colonists would come into Africa, they would always settle somewhere in the South. The, 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 the North was always primarily Muslim. This is the same case in Ghana. It's the same case in Nigeria. It's the same case in Ivory Coast. So they go to the southern regions. They develop those regions. The north is always undeveloped. That's why if you go to anywhere, you know, northern Ghana is much cheaper than, than southern Ghana or northern Nigeria. It's not like the south region, the Igbo region, or, 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 or the Yoruba region. It's, it's always the case. So, so the white Christians who come to, to, to Nigeria... Bring Christianity to the Igbo region. End up when those same South regions wanted to get independence. Or to develop certain things for themselves. Well, then who does the United States and Britain go support? They go support the North. They give the North the weapons in Nigeria. Not the people that they trained and did they give it to the North. So after they did the destroy each other, 
because you know the West is behind these wars. Then here come the West giving them aid. Now, no, 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 no. Look at this. They're starting these problems in this in, 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 to a certain degree in this country in these countries. Look at look at France. Shout out to Dr. Deacon Eric P. France, their central Frank or their Western Frank, and I'm talking about just the, their currency is linked to what Ivory Coast is linked to what Burkina Faso, all of that. The French is pretty much dominating currency there. The Congo, this is the this is the Frank. They got Thomas Sankara killed, and then they'll play the role like once these countries are trying to stabilize, and if it's if it's to the degree they don't like, they will then destroy it. And then they will come in and say, here's some foreign aid. Here's some foreign aid. So let me ask you this, and I'm a conservative. I see my brother Anthony Brian Logan in the chat. I'm gonna shout all these chat, super chats out. What do what what happens if you just give a group of people money? What happens to that economy? Well, you're you're in poverty, your country, you're you're in poverty. Let me give you a lot of money. Let me give you some aid. What happens? That money goes and poverty still is there. It's just like dumping a lot of money into the black community. If somebody were to write a billion dollar or something check to the black community, what would we do with it? You'd fuck it up. You still don't have the same problems. And, 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 and the West understands this. this. This is something that we know. It's to keep Africa begging. It's just the same thing that Democrats do. It's to keep people begging. You, you don't give money and throw money at situations. You, 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 it doesn't work. It keeps people in poverty. The, the difference that the Chinese is doing, the Chinese is bringing investment. Investment. Now, let me talk about the strategy the Chinese is using, and I'll, I'll compare it to what happened to what the United States did with France after World War II. After World War II, the Fran French, yeah, they ended up winning the war with the Allies, but they were decimated. What did the United States do? The United States says, okay, we're going to give you this, we're going to give you this, this, this loan to reboot your economy. So that if you become stabilized, you will be able to buy goods and services from us in the future. Check this out. I'm going to say it again. Let me help you stabilize your economy so that in the future, you're able to buy from me as a long-term trade partner. See, that's the difference between investment and aid. But but in the case of Africa, when the West looks at African countries, do do they do that? To the extent that the Chinese is doing it. What the Chinese is doing is this. The Chinese are saying, okay, Africa, you're an emerging market. If we can develop your economy for other types of businesses. Let's talk about the infrastructure, the roads. ABL made a case about that. If we can improve certain things about the economy, not only will other businesses come out and invest in this country, but also you will be able to look at me as a long-term trading partner as you stabilize. So, as China is invested in, in Africa, not only are they getting, they're doing the most trade in Africa as anybody else. 
Also, what they're getting is now, you know, China has a lot of human rights abuse issues. When it comes to the United Nations, they are winning African countries to vote for them in certain things. That wasn't the case 25, 30 years ago. But what China is doing politically, they're killing a lot of birds with one stone. They're, they're getting these countries to develop more. They're going to be buying their goods and services as long-term trade partners. And also what they are doing is, watch this. They're getting allies on the fronts and support as they're getting their dominance out there. So people are not going to be voting against China in the UN for certain things. It's not going to happen. Let's talk about China's middle class economy right now. China, which was a developing country. And ABL just said it. China was a developing country 50 or 40 years ago, but now it's developed. Think about this. Now China is a middle class country. Right? China is a middle class country. Very developed now. So if I have goods and services and I need to export things, I'm trying to sell my stuff to the rest of the world to make a profit. Well, I got to pay people more because my economy is middle class. You got a billion people living in China. And people are going to be wanting to get paid more. I mean, now you have not only mainland China, you know, Hong Kong is a part of China, but it's its own in Macau and its own, you know, situation there, different governments in a way. So China, they, their economy is topping out inside of China. People want to get paid more money. So where can you get cheap labor from? And more importantly, where can you get cheap labor and access to natural resources? Where is the uh, oh, the only other place, one of the main places you can go to and do this? Africa. Now, you send your diaspora over there. Many of these guys who were skilled, like there's a guy in, in, in Uganda who set up a steel factory. Well, these guys in Uganda, they have the natural resource of steel, but they don't know how to do this. So you send your diaspora over there and they start doing it and they start developing it and stuff like that. And becomes, you know, so now you have, again, you're employing people over there. You're paying, paying them low rates or lower rate than you would in China. So you're stimulating their economy. And for you, you're not paying as much. And then for you, you're also getting access to uh, 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 more natural resources and you're able to export that. That's business. You see, uh, uh, this was wrong with black people in general and black Americans in particular. You think that somebody's supposed to come over to 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 Africa and just do this shit for the free because they want to help Africa. N nigga, you, you're not even going to Africa doing shit for free trying to help Africa. Not, e not even you. But you expect that they're supposed to come over to Africa and just do it out of the goodness of their heart. Who, who does that? Is it, Chi is it China's fault that, 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 that these African countries are, in many cases, very corrupt? Now, I gotta, I'm going I'm to I'm say this. Yes, colonization was very brutal in certain cases, right? But I can't I can't call racism all the time because let's look at the British. And let's look at some of the other countries that they had that are doing very well. Let's look at Qatar. Qatar was a British colony. Qatar had oil. So if the white man got his foot on 
on on on on on on on his colony's neck. Why is Qatar at the highest? I don't know per capita one of the one of the highest like one hundred twenty thousand per dollars per person. And Nigeria is at what I don't know two thousand. Do, do, do you know what, what I'm saying is this? You cannot just blame the colonization people for failures of countries. A lot of these failures happen because of these people running the countries, too. Look at some of the other countries that are that are doing well right now that were poor. Not necessarily colonies, but China itself was very poor. Taiwan was poor. Botswana was dead, was the was the poorest countries in, in the world in the 60s. Rwanda was just dead poor. Tunisia. I mean, all of these countries were dead poor. Singapore. I mean, let me let me get let me even go as recent as South Korea 50 years ago. Dead poor. Like 50 years ago, Nigeria was in a better situation than South Korea. This is the truth. Zimbabwe was in a better situation 37 years ago than South Korea. So, so why is it that South Korea can do what it's doing and Zimbabwe can't? I mean, this is what I'm talking about. See, and it's not the Chinese's fault. That these countries cannot get it together. Because the West is going to play their games in any country. Yeah, they're going to be, they're going to do this and that. Yeah, they'll play their games and want to get foreign aid. But see, that's the that that has a lot to do with the corruption. Because again, the West can only play their games to a certain degree, depending on how corrupt you want to be. That's why the West can't play the Arabs while they can play Africans. And a lot of you blacks are mad at the Chinese for doing something that you can't do or that you're not willing to do. Again, I got to go back to foreign aid or stuff like that. What China is doing in Africa they're bringing skill sets of people. I was watching, for example, this, this this lady. She went to Zambia. She was a dentist, and uh, a lot of a lot of these Chinese people are bringing their particular skill sets. They're sharing it with with African people. Now, this is not about Chinese liking Africans. Again, uh, you Negroes are are so mad that some African person didn't get into a, a hotel. That's where y'all think at. And that's where your mind is at. And this is why can't nobody deal with you really take you serious. I don't care nothing about uh, they won't let me into a, a, a hotel or something. I'm not, I'm not dealing in that. I, I, what I'm dealing with overall is that the Chinese are bringing a skill set to African people that they didn't have before. They are ex they are st establishing industry in China that was not there before. And, and to be honest, for a country like Ghana, that a lot of you African Americans are, are trying to go back to, well, the reason why, a, a good reason, why Ghana probably is doing what it's doing, hey, the Chinese are there, man. You know, when you have roads, you have good internet, like, for example, Anthony Brian Logan is, is, is in the chat. Um, I would more than likely want to do my internet live streams from Uganda. Can I do that? No. Why? The infrastructure is not there. Why? Because I got to go out and get gasoline to put in a generator to, to, to get electricity. I don't have those issues in Poland, which also was poor. 30 years ago. In many cases, more poor than Nigeria was when it first came. Poland post-communism was worse off than Nigeria post-colonization. But again, 
the infrastructure, if it's good, it brings in not only big business, but it brings in small business. People like, let's say myself, Anthony Brian Logan, or maybe Ted Randall, people who want to come in and start ups and do start business. The, 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 the last thing I want to worry about is how much my electricity bill is going to be. If I want to come to Ghana or Nigeria and set up a business, can I set that business up? And is that business going to cost me as much as it would in Poland? And, and the fact about it is this. It's going to cost me more in most cases to do to start up my business in Africa than it is to run it in the EU. You have infrastructure issues. You have road issues. You have a lot of corruption to start these businesses. All of these things is going to is going to be uh, is going to be an issue for, for entrepreneurs and people who want to do small business. So as the infrastructure. Is better in countries. Not only do you get big business, but you get the startups. Think about Amazon.com, the the Jeff Bezos and the, the one the, probably the, the fourth or fifth biggest country in the world. Could could this country have started in Zimbabwe? Could Amazon.com have been started uh, anywhere in Africa? No, there's no infrastructure for that kind of business. So what the Chinese is doing is opening the door for other unique type of businesses to come in. And a lot of you guys are talking a lot of shit about the Chinese when, number one, you can't do what they're doing. Number two, you're not willing to do what they're doing. And like I said, since the Chinese have been in Africa, poverty has decreased tremendously. Countries like Uganda, countries like Kenya, and absolutely, like James Edwards says, no war. When you don't have any kind of economy, I'm not saying it's perfect, but again, in, in many countries, I would say China has stabilized there not being a war because the economy economies are getting better. And when the economy gets better, what happens? Tourism gets better, Negro. See, a lot of y'all, y'all don't want to have this argument with me. Because when the economy gets better, you don't have any wars, and then you have another industry with tourism. That means, let's say, 30 years ago when there was the Bush War in Uganda, was tourism down? Fuck yes, it was down. But now, because of what's going on in, in, in a lot of African countries, okay, so now you're stabilized. There's no war. Okay, now, now I, can, I, can, I can get this tourism industry up. Now I can get investment into the country. And a lot of you African Americans and black, and black people in the diaspora, hey, this is the ball that we dropped. You don't have the infrastructure to go in and change anything for them. So why are you mad at them? I mean, this, this is what I'm talking about. And the thing about it is, is and, and, and to Howard Cooper's point, this is business. And when it's business, it's never personal. China is not there to care about Africa. But what China is doing is they're giving Africa a better deal than the West has been given. Hey, listen, we're going to give you no interest loans or small interest loans. They've been outbidding the West for certain projects. Like, for example, that war in France started, not war, in Ivory Coast 10 years ago. It started because the Ivory Coast wanted a new bridge or something like that. And China was going to outbid them, out, outbid the French company. And that's what China can do. No, those loans do have strings attached. That's why it's called a loan. I mean, ABL, listen, O'Shea, those loans do have strings attached. What loan doesn't have it? Low interest loans. If, if there's a loan that you can give me cheaper than somebody else give me, it, it has strings attached. It, it, nobody gives, again, this is not free aid. We're not dealing in aid. But in many cases, China is, is, is offering a better deal. And it's not China's fault that Africa is not in a position to do what it needs to do. 
That's not their fault. It's not their problem. A lot of that I got to put at the hands of black people themselves. Corrupt leaders. I mean, just, just think about this shit. <sighs> think about this. Just to get from one border to the next. If you go to Ghana to Nigeria, the corruption is so bad. If you're carrying goods and services there, they're trying to extort people all the time. The corruption is ridiculous in Africa. I've seen it personally. Ridiculous. The corruption is off the fucking chain. Now, who, who is to blame for the corruption in Africa? You go to corruption list, index list, like I said, African countries are going to be some of the most corrupt countries that it is. From, 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 from the bottom to the top. And when the country is bringing in profits, a lot of these, these, these people are taking money. And we know in Nigeria, they do it all the time. How much money has Nigeria stole from its people? Over a trillion dollars in the last 30, 40 years. Again, you know, siphoning oil. This corruption is real. So if the Chinese capitalize that on that, and, and you Nigerians or you Ghanans or Kenyans are upset that your people are being mistreated, go talk to your leadership as to why. And really, y'all have fucked over your own people. So that's just, you know, like I said, they're opportunistic. Like I was saying again, and not like I say, anybody want to have a discussion? You know what? L let me see this before I, before I get out of here. A lot of you Negroes who come in these comment sections, oh, you're... Your position is anti-ethical. Uh, you. Th this is a bad. Uh, this is a bad. Uh, 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 explanation, nigga. When you want to to give your positions on why you feel a certain way that you feel, don't come in and comment. You know what you're talking about. No, well then, then what? What am I supposed to talking about? Come in and say why I'm wrong. Why am I wrong? Why am not? Why am I? Why am I incorrect? Because you can't say why I'm incorrect. Because you don't know what you're, you know what you're talking about. So that's all I want to say about this. You know, the Chinese are not supposed to like black people. They don't owe black people anything. Nobody owes your black ass anything. You know, it's it's all about. Well, a lot of blacks, you don't like us. You know, you mistreating us. I, I mean, who cares? I mean, I've been living in Poland for three years. Dr. J.J. Redwood. I mean, <laughs> I'm, if, if you, if you want to really get a world wake-up call, come to Poland. Live here for three years as a black dude. Dark as me. You will find out real quick, you need to get over the fact that they don't like you here. You, you need to get over that. See, that's what's wrong with y'all. Y'all are always looking for somebody to like you. Why they why they mistreating us? They ain't here to help us. Nobody needs to like you, fool. This was wrong with black people. This is why there's nobody to respect you. I don't give a damn if they like me or not. And Howard, they did that they was driving by. I was on a live walking and somebody called me the N word as it was driving by. The Chinese people, you know, when they when you have Africans having babies with Chinese people, they don't even claim them kids as part Chinese. So they don't supposed to like you. It, it, we always got to deal with blacks or Africans wanting somebody to like. Man, get get over that. You sound like a punk. Don't nobody 
supposed to like your black ass? Shout out to Solo and David. Man, I, I'm, I'm tired of y'all with that bullshit. The reason why people mistreat us or talk shit to black people because you don't do what you're supposed to do. So, yeah, if I, I got to come to your country and help you do this and help you do that and you can't do it, now I'm going to look at you like you're like, 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 like you a hoe. That's what Simple to Peace said, the same thing. That's how they look at you. And if you can't do what you're supposed to, and I got to bail you out, and I got to, you know, you can't develop certain industries, I got to do it for you. And if you come to my country, I'm assuming that you don't know what you're doing because you're in my country. And a lot of Africans do cause crimes. Not a lot, but, you know, when they go to other places, they cause problems. They can cause problems. If you come to my country, I don't want to sell nothing to you. I refuse you service. Tough. Deal with it. Nobody asked you to come over to where I'm at, man. Deal with it. But black people got to start making people respect you. We're always looking for them to like us or, or why are you treating us this way? Why? I mean, enough with the bullshit. Seriously. I'm quite tired of it. I'm, I'm really quite, I'm, I'm quite tired of y'all in the comment section. I mean, listen. Do every country has to earn respect globally. Negro, every country. 50 years ago, when a Chinese person shows up with a Chinese passport, do you know how what people think of them? They look at them as if they were trash. 50 years ago, you show up with a Singapore passport, people look at you as you're trash. 100 years ago, you come up with a, you're from Luxembourg, not even that. 30, 40 years ago, I remember Ireland. Ireland used to be some of the, one of the biggest jokes in Europe. Even when I was in school, Ireland was a joke. Oh, the Irish, man, they're, they're dirty. People used to say that about them all the time. They're drunks. The Polish had a bad reputation. I mean, think about it. When I came to Poland, Poland is a, is, is, is a, a middle-income country. Even in Poland right now, they got a bad reputation. Go to Britain and tell somebody you're from Poland, and people will look at you like most white people in Britain, they don't have no respect for Polish people. Now, this is a country that is, I mean, you can take your the Polish passport. It's not a bad passport. But every country got to earn their respect. You prove to people over the years that you're not supposed to be fucked with. Poland is proving people wrong. Singapore is getting people's respect. Qatar. Every country has to put in the work to get respect. Taiwan. Indonesia. All of these people do that. Except black people. Like black people think like, well, we don't have to really do shit for y'all to respect us, but y'all need to respect us. What? Are you serious? Like, like, be really be honest with yourself and look how, how you sound if that's your business. Like, nobody takes you serious. And why, and number one, why should they? Because again, 50, 30, 40 years ago, when the Chinese were showing up to different places, nobody took them serious. You're from China. Oh, my God. Give me a break. So that's what I'm saying. And I'm going to do a live stream on this tonight. I'm on my, on my channel because I'm tired of y'all. And y'all don't want to get up there and put the work in. Black Americans and Africans in general. I need to get AB. It's ABL in here. We're going to get y'all straight. Don't worry about nothing. We're going to get y'all straight.
I might get Dr. Redwood in here and, and let, let him get the, light the fire to some of y'all. Because y'all don't want to do right. Bust your ass, do what every other country does, do what every other group of people do. They build themselves up. They work hard. They put their motherfucking feet to the fire. And, and they, they, they don't they don't live in the past and shit. What happened to me? Yeah, now things have happened to black folks. I understand that. But nobody wants to hear your excuse. The fact is, the world is tired of hearing about why you can't do something. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a black person, and I'm tired of listening to you niggas talk about that shit. Me. I'm, ti- I'm tired of hearing about why you can't do it. And I'm one of you. So spare me. You got these countries that were dirt poor, and, and, and now a lot of these countries are what you call rich. You got countries that nobody would want to move to 50 years ago, and people dying to move it. Qatar is one of them. Ireland is another one. People 30 years ago were trying to get the fuck out of Ireland. Now, everybody named Mama want to go to Ireland. Botswana. 55 years ago, it's the poorest country in the world. Now, Botswana, I think, has a, like, what? A better economy, GDP, than Brazil? In a lot of Latin American countries? Now, again, they, but they also have the least corruption. So, black America can turn it around. African countries can turn it around. But y'all don't want to turn it around. So shut the fuck up. Stop hating the Chinese people. The chi- Chinese people are doing what they're supposed to do, which is take advantage of a situation. The white man is doing what he's supposed to do, which is take advantage of a situation. They're just doing their job. They're doing what they're supposed to do. If you can't do something, well, I'm going to do it for you. I'm going to take the opportunity to do what you can't do. I don't owe you no niceness. This is business. This is about money. Only y'all think that way. I'm going to read these super chat. You know what? I'm tired of y'all. I, 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 I'm not even going to do the stream tonight. I'm, cause I'm, yeah, I'm getting upset. I'm finding myself. having Because <laughs> it's about to go there. I don't want to cuss nobody out. This is why I gotta start. I gotta I gotta quit YouTube because I can't help y'all. <laughs> I got the urge to be a nigga. I can't, I can't, I, I you know what? Let me go back to making jokes and shit. Cause y'all, I can't talk to y'all about nothing, nothing honest. <laughs> I'm just I mean, K Zag and I'm a, I'm gonna have to leave it alone. Cause I'm tired of y'all in these comment sections talking about this bullshit. Violence isn't the answer for sure. Not that you're saying that. No, it ain't the answer because they've been violent in these countries for years. It ain't done shit. Except for they kill each other all the time. But look, let me, guys, I just wanted to make the point. A few things again, okay? What up, Mantha Cakes? Foreign aid is bad. Investment always supersedes foreign aid, okay? China has, I don't know what, quadrupled its trade since it's been in Africa. And then the Chinese are trying to stabilize African economies so that African economies can buy from China. Chinese corporations are also setting up business in, 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 in Africa and in industries, many cases that were not there. And, and we got to talk about that. We got to talk about that, guys. A lot of you want to get mad about the Chinese bringing industries. Now, I can see if the Chinese are, 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 are selling clothes and shit like that, like, which I don't agree with. You do have some Chinese that go into the, the, cert, the certain same businesses that blacks do. 
But we can also make the case that the Chinese are bringing expertise that was not available in a lot of countries. Okay, that means that cer certain industries would not exist if they were not there. That's huge. That's huge. That's huge. So, again, China is going to do what it's supposed to do, which is position itself to be a world leader and world dominant force, just like the USA did, has done, just like the UK has done in the past. The France, this is no, this is no different. China got to Africa before anybody else did in terms of investment, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of trying to stabilize the continent that I got to give them credit for. So let me go ahead and read. Uh, some of these super chats. Y'all need to get out your feelings, man. A lot of y'all are butthurt in these comment sections. You butthurt and you don't know what you're talking about and you cannot put up any kind of positions. Yeah, you right, but are you, you know, like one guy said, you, 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 you geopolitically, you know, what you're talking about you're unethical, but you're still my boy. Man, don't give me these little half ass comments, dude. Like some of y'all, but I'm going to start calling y'all out by name. You know, you want to talk about somebody's wrong or something, but you, you, you're not explaining as to why. Just like a nigga. But anyways, Howling Thunder, black people cannot ask for any kind of respect because we do not respect ourselves. We choose to be ignorant and dumb for no apparent reason. Or shit. That's the goddamn truth. That's the truth. I mean, I mean, are we supposed to sit up here and, and lie about that? People don't respect Africans or black people. Like, for example. Nigerian Americans come all over over to America and they brag about how good they're doing. Like I had that one dude on my channel I was talking about. Man, Dynast Amir is in Nigeria right now. And he is letting Nigerians have it based off of their infrastructure and how fucked up it is over there. So if a Chinese person, you know, when you come from Africa to like Poland or China, People are like, well, oh my God, you're 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 poor. That's what they think. <sighs> Let's be strong, brothers. Hey, yo, thank you, brother Howard Cooper, Horse D, Cal Fat. Thank you, ten dollars. David Glover, shout out to the channel. Good work. Soul TV eighty four. Thank you, James Edward O'Shea. Has good intelligence on Africa. Chinese doing this for free. My brother Ted Randolph. West Africans invest a lot in Asian countries. Import export. You heard anything about their illegal mining corporations? West Africans invest in a lot of... Oh, yeah, 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 that is true. With the import-export, the illegal money. I don't... I, I'm pretty sure they exist. I never see us doing it for free. James Edwards, fire! Darian Nelson, China will eventually surpass everyone. They've already the most production in the world. I mean, they have, because now the Chinese government has, like, people overseas working for, for, for cheaper than they can do it in China. I know a lot of Nigerians who love the Chinese business to depart from the area. The truth is we aren't going to produce those same goods. They'd rather buy them as cheap as possible from these Chinese. There is no national pride. King Nick, that's absolutely true. Turf Oracle, salutations to the chat. Dr. Duke and the Snipe Squad. <laughs> Turf Oracle be killing these. Shout out to James Edward. Howling Thunder, sheer ignorance, so say absolute pure ignorance, but they get butt hurt when you blast them on their idiocy. It is sad, brother. If Africans developed their countries, they wouldn't need to deal with Chinese, but be self-sufficient and don't rely on aid. Darian Nelson, we need to leave Africa alone so they can learn how to get their shit together. Dr. Deacon Eric, P. Amon, thank you, Dr. D, for the tweet out of Super Chat. This is what I'm telling y'all, man. You know they're illegally mining because Beacon be going to the moon. Mr. Salveria, I wouldn't doubt it. But guys, listen, I got to get the hell out of here. I'm tired of y'all. And this is my second, my last live stream on the subject. See y'all tonight. I got an interview with Paris Milan, brothers. Peace out.